Da, 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 the Bake Bake Down. Welcome to the Bake Down Podcast, where we discuss hot takes on hot bakes. And welcome to Vlogmas Day 2, where we are going to be exploring more cake fails. Yes. Today we have a video fail from TikTok. This is somebody's failed attempt at a fault line cake. Ooh, okay. Okay, everything's going well. He's doing the fruits. Okay. This would kill my sister. <laughs> Her Uh-oh. sister's afraid of fruits. <laughs> it's going awry. Not enough buttercream on the top. Yeah. Also, he didn't do it thick enough on the side to make a nice fall line. Yeah. Like, it's... That's a shame. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. But also, the idea of eating lemon slices... In your cake. Is not yeah. so pleasant either. I know. It does look really nice. Totally. This is where he went wrong, I feel. Yeah. Digging it. He's kind of digging <clears throat> um, the piping bag into the cake as well. Just needs to like really like glob it on there. Yeah. Because that's how you get it. So. And I think that his lemon slices are a little too thick. Thick. Because mm-hmm. if he had thinned them out or cut them with like a mandolin slicer, it would have been um, more inward. And then... Because... Looking at his lemon slices, he would have had to do, like, that thick of buttercream. Yeah. So that it would pop out. Yeah. Did you see how thick that one was? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, because you're, whatever you've put inside of your fault line should never, ever hit your scraper. Yeah. It should just dance on the outside. Exactly. And you actually end up losing a lot of the middle of your fault line mm-hmm. because the buttercream is essentially covering up so that you just end up with that little bit. Exactly. Oh, too bad. I really love his accent <laughs> and the way that he says things. Mm-hmm. Um, did he say that he cried on national TV? It sounded like it. Let's take a look at his profile yeah. and see what his other cakes are. I want to like. see. Ooh. Oh, pretty. He's only 15 years old? Well, this was posted two years ago. Still, he's still oh, not no, three ad- years ago. Okay, right? he's just an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. For 15? That's stunning. His sponge is beautiful. Yes. I always chill my cake before crumb coating it. After I've stacked it. I sometimes do. I sometimes don't. I feel like it's too risky. It depends what your buttercream texture is like. All the stuff that you hate. (laughs) Sticking inedible stuff on the cake. Yes. But I do think that's a very beautiful cake. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. There it is again. But looking at his technique of um, the way that he crumb coats and all those things, I can see now why that happened with the fall line cake. Because he's very uh, minimal with the way that he puts everything on. And the fault line cake just does not lend well to being minimal. The thing is, though, I think when you're a home baker, you have to try and be minimal because you don't just have an unlimited amount of buttercream I on know, hand. And that's when I've run into the most fails. Mm-hmm. And that kind of is like when you're switching over from working at a bakery to working back at home again, you're like, uh, well, I don't really have this. And I've even had like people that um, run their own bakeries and then they come and then like we do things together and it's like it never works out as well and they're like oh I don't know why this is happening like because we literally only have like this amount like you know when you're doing um, buttercream mm-hmm. and in order to get it really really nice and smooth and you have to you make have to fill it exactly, up all the way you've got to fill it up all the way so it's covering the beaters and that is the way to get rid of any air bubbles yeah who is creating that much cake on like a regular home baking time? I know. Where you're going to have that much buttercream. I it's know. just unrealistic. And like even when I posted a uh, tutorial on YouTube for how to ice a cake without doing a crumb coat, the way you do it is you put on so much buttercream in the beginning that yeah. you can't really pick up crumbs because it's just so thick. Yes. And then you scrape it thin. But the people in the comments were saying, oh, I'm a home baker. And, like, if I need to ice a cake in, like, yellow, I can't dye all of my buttercream yellow because I still need it for other colors. Exactly. And I was like, oh, right. Let's see what other people said in the comments, too, if anybody gave some advice. Yes. Still looks this- like it tasted good. I'm glad it's not just me who cries over a failed cake. When's the last time you cried over a cake? Oh, 
Um, oh, on my show. Ah. Yes. I didn't cry, though. I just was, like, panicking a little bit. Right. That's it. I feel like it was when I was little and starting out with cakes mm. and taking orders from home, and it was stressful. But the reason that I cried was not because of the cake problem well like kind of but it was because when they were moving the cake like the the it was done like the timer had gone off and like we were just finished Mm -hmm. um we were putting the cake into the fridge and there was a lip in the fridge and it like bumped and then it slid oh no yeah that's so sad i know but and there was nothing i could do at that point yeah that sucks just a tip make the middle layer a bit smaller so it's easier to put the fruit and then the icing will be much easier as well yeah i don't get what they mean like, don't put as much I thought, fruit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe you should put the lemons in at the end. <sighs> tell what? me tell me you don't know how to cake decorate without telling me you don't know how to cake decorate. <laughs> how, how would you do that? Oh, easy, Alia. You would just scrape it out and then just somehow fit it. <laughs> or do they mean you cut it out? The, the outline of the fault line like on the top and then that makes no sense <laughs> because then the, the lemons would still be protruding out further oh yeah ew <laughs> I wouldn't use the lemon curd a bit too runny for a fault line no that that's the filling and that has no nothing. bearing on it whatsoever yeah that has yeah. nothing to do with it and then yeah this one says write happy birthday trilby on it and then it'll be worth 80 dollars <laughs> a throwback to our very first podcast with Kate with Kate Kate. Gate. make sure you watch it if you haven't already yes um someone did say the right advice, which was to put way more icing yeah. on the top and bottom yeah. and not squish it. Yes. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people comment this on like cake fails, especially when we admit the cake fails, like, oh, I bet it still tasted good or it still looks fine or uh-huh. whatever. But if you don't and you're like, this is my awesome cake that my customer didn't like, everyone's <sighs> like, well, I see why. Yep. <laughs> you can't be perfect all the time. True. True. I find them so much easier to do by cutting a little bit out of the cake and then putting the lemon in. Oh. Like, like, cutting... like you're losing the middle of the cake then. Oh. Yeah. I feel like that would just make the cake weaker. It would make it weaker. Yeah. I feel like that's too risky. Mm-hmm. Also, what if you don't, what if you cut too much? Yeah. And then it looks ugly. And then that would make sense that you can't use lemon curd in the center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe they work together. On those comments. I like the idea, but I would have removed the orange rind, but there wasn't even oranges in there. Orange slices. Someone's colorblind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just like you. <laughs> I am not colorblind. <laughs> well, fault line cakes aren't the easiest. They aren't. But I actually find it really impressive that he's only 15 years old at this time mm-hmm. and was so into cake decorating. I always find that impressive because I had to bake in secret. Did you think so. I was impressive when I, I did. was 14? And I did, 15? and now you're just falling behind. What? <laughs> I got my red seal when I was 19. What do you mean? Um, yeah, but I don't make a lot of fault line cakes. They're not my favorite. What about you guys? Do you guys make fault line cakes? Let us know down in the comments below. Have you had any fault line cake fails? We want to know about them. Send us pictures. Yeah. Send it on our Instagram. We'll put it right down here. Follow us. We post different uh, reels on there of our content. And the more the merrier. I think we have like 50 followers right now. (laughs) Something like that. So a lovely Christmas gift would be if we could make it to 100 Instagram followers. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed. And come back tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 3. Bye. Bye.